It's Movie Time is produced by John DeSando. Listen to the full shows and read reviews online at wcbe.org. I'm John DeSando. And I'm Kevin Carr. And this is It's Movie Time. <laughs> and, Kev, look it. I think this is the third shaft, right? It's, they well, can't even change the name. They, they, they did two sequels of the original Shaft in 1971, <laughs> but then when they started doing additional sequels, they just named them all Shaft. There's three Shaft movies, and they're all sequels. It's like Halloween last year, when you had Halloween, which are like, no, 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 this is a direct sequel to Halloween. So it's Halloween 2? Nope. Just Halloween again. And two of those have Samuel L. Jackson. That's true. All three of them have Richard Roundtree. Oh, that, oh that's right, yeah. yeah. Who was great to see. In this one, uh, last night. Yeah, well, you know, it's uh, it, when the question in the song is, who is the man, there is no answer because there's three of them in this movie. <laughs> I know. All right, so what's different about this one? Well, the big difference is they make it multi-generational. In the Shaft from 2000, with John Singleton directing it, rest in peace, he made it a, kind of like a reboot, but it was a, but it was a remake and it was supposed to be... Uh, Richard Brownty does show up. In this one, Jesse Usher plays... Samuel L. Jackson's Shaft's son, right. and they have to work together. And Shaft presents the old school, the hip, <laughs> the somewhat misogynistic, <laughs> who is the man, <laughs> sex machine <laughs> a, a, a <laughs> approach to Harlem street crime. I'll tell you, Kevin, the whole movie is worth seeing Jackson perform his shtick. I love Jackson, <laughs> honestly. And here's the thing J Jesse Usher plays the young Shaft. Yeah. And it's a very typical fish out of water, two ends of the spectrum, yeah, new know. school versus old school. You got the millennial who's, you know, got the, he knows about apps and computers. Well, and, he's an MIT grad. Yeah, <laughs> and, and he works for the FBI as a data analyst, sort of in a <laughs> yes. Jack Ryan, a pre-Jack Ryan mode. Oh, a good one. And then Samuel L. Jackson is the old school, and it's each one trying to school the other. Well, you shouldn't be so misogynistic. No, you need to go after the ladies a little bit more. <laughs> And and honestly, that's where the, the I lost the movie there because it's not Shaft. That's not what a Shaft movie is. Yeah, it, it would be like making a James Bond movie and bringing in the young hipster to explain to James Bond why he's kind of a dinosaur. <laughs> and that's funny because there is a line in there about Bond. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How Bond would wish would, would be patting himself after Shaft. Yeah. If, if, oh yeah. If he were real. Well, yeah, and. <laughs> And and it's look. I mean, I don't mind a comedy element to it, and you expect that with director Tim's story. He's different than John Singleton uh, when, when when he rebooted it in two thousand. What has story done, Kev? Do you remember? He did stuff like Taxi. He did the Fantastic Four movie, Taxi, the one with uh, Queen Latifah and, and Jimmy Fallon. Okay. Uh, he did the Fantastic Four movies. I think he did the Ride Along movies and the uh, the the one of the movies with. Uh, I don't think it was Think. I think it was Think Like a Man. I think he did directed those. So he's been. Playing around with a lot of comedy, he has a real yes. background in comedy. Yeah, you're right. And you get that in here. You do, you do. Much, yeah. much more. The other two, the other Shaft films are much more serious. I mean, the 1971 movie is a little goofy now because it's, it's. I mean, it it basically started black exploitation. Black. I was just gonna say, boy, that is the seminal piece for yes. exploiting blacks. Yeah, but I mean, I guess the thing is, for me in this in this movie. In 1971, America, and particularly black America, needed a, a, a Shaft movie. They needed that because it was the first one that really had the, the uh, African Americans as main characters that weren't just throwaway bad guys, or which actually in, involved them in it. And I thought, and, and that's great, sort of was societally where they needed it. You don't really need this. And in the end, you, you, you don't get a full Shaft movie. You get... You get half shafted. You get half shafted. I think they don't do a bad job mm -hmm. in integrating the three and talking about how many 40, 50 years there is in between oh, yeah. the, uh, them all. I don't think they do a bad job, but it really is a hot mess. Of, it's a of lot tropes. of different things going yes, on. I know, there it is. And there is violence, but yeah. it, it, it's, it's violence more in the Pulp Fiction mode. It, yeah, mean, it's you know. goofy, comic booky kind of violence. <laughs> it, it, it is. It's it, shoot 'em ups and, and without any worry of consequences or, or anything like that. Uh, my favorite parts are, are with the when, when it's a traditional Shaft movie. Yeah, right. And, and I really felt that Jesse Usher is his name, the young man, mm -hmm. uh, was a weak element because his character is weak. Now, they intersperse that with some 
pretty heavy duty calisthenics. Yeah. They throw in there to let you know that he's really still that he's a cool kid. Yeah. But basically, he seemed like a weak character, and I think it's as uh, upon considering it, it's juxtaposing him with the the uh, just out of sight Samuel L. Jackson. He doesn't. He doesn't bring the level of cool. <laughs> no. Jesse Usher brings the level of like the Disney Channel, where's where his roots are. <laughs> That's a good one. And I really think you're right there. I mean, he and and he could do more. But if you felt if if you want his contribution that he gave to the Independence Day movies, when he did the Independence Day sequel, you're going to get that here. Right, right. So what's to be enjoyed, Kev? Well, look, if you want the comedy, if you want the goofy... The one-liners. Ri yeah, the ride-along kind of comedy, you're going to get that. Uh, it's yeah. just if you want an authentic Shaft movie, you get... That's interspersed in there. And it's, at times they even they even kind of go over too much with... I mean, they make uh, Samuel L. Jackson's version of Shaft almost unsavory at times. and There, there wasn't a coolness to it that there was in previous films. And I think that's that's to play into the comedy. I mean, that's really what it is. It's a comedy more than a detective story. But you are going to see the long leather coat. Oh, yeah. And you are going to get the wisecracking. And, uh, and you are going to get the misogynistic. Holy crap, there must be another word for that, Kevin. There's a lot uh, of that. Boy, there is an awful lot of that. You also get Regina Hall, who's very funny. Yes. And, and I, I, I think she's great in the movie. She's out of place in the movie because that's, again, it's not... A Shaft movie, but she's funny in it. I think she's actually really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just, I, I didn't know really what to do with her. No, they didn't. Uh, but to me, the centerpiece is Samuel L. Jackson. Yep. And I think forever and ever, I never get enough of Samuel <laughs> L. Jackson. So I would have to say the, the movie Shaft is worth going to, to see Jackson. Beyond sure. that, it's a hodgepodge. He is a of bad mother. <laughs> Shut your mouth! All right, Kevin Carr, this is the third shaft since yes. 1971. What grade would you award? I'm going to give it a C. <laughs> All right. I felt I was shafted with this. <laughs> and I'm going to give it a C plus because of Jackson, but nothing more than that. <laughs>